I'm going to just say it. I am. I'm nervous. I haven't had a boyfriend on the podcast. Yeah. And I've never been a boyfriend on a podcast. God, I want a story that you write. I don't want to initiate it. I don't want to pursue it. I don't want to be the person that goes up to the guy first or says something first. I'm not doing that anymore. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janina Amapola, and I post these every single Tuesday. And if you are watching the YouTube video, which I feel like people opt to for a little bit more now, um, you might see an unfamiliar face. But if you've been following me on Instagram, then you know who this face is. So uh, hello, Caleb. What's going on? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to just say it. I am, I'm nervous, um, because I haven't had a boyfriend on the podcast. Yeah. And I've never been a boyfriend on a podcast. So this is unfamiliar territory for the both of us, but we are really excited. And so, um, I listened to a lot of Joe Rogan before this to just to, yeah. So you really, prepped a little really bit. Prepare for. Oh, yeah. good. And he has his Alani new, which you can don't, see in the camera. Don't expose me. That's well, I'll expose not a very you. manly energy drink. It's fine. I think you should own it. Okay. I think you should own it. So recently on my Instagram, I announced that I have a boyfriend and this is that boyfriend. We finally came out of hiding. We did. And it's been crazy. It's been a long time coming, to be honest. And it's been something that we wanted just to wait to share until we were like fully ready. And just to be straight out of the gate, we've been dating for seven months and um, we didn't announce it for all seven months, even though there were a couple times in between that where we were like, okay, should we, are we ready? But we decided not to until we felt fully, fully ready to handle everything that is to come and the next steps in life and just feel Feeling like our relationship was in a really good healthy spot before announcing it so yeah it's here crazy we yeah we're yeah. here um and so if you've been a part of my journey for a while um yeah i haven't announced a relationship in a really long time a lot of you guys have followed me in my journey i've been on youtube for 11 years and it's just so crazy a lot of you guys have seen me go through relationships and breakups and like i'm gonna make honestly what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a whole podcast um, separately on my own of like more of my thoughts from the girl's perspective, how the Lord worked on it, how the Lord showed me signs before Caleb and what the Lord showed me within dating and why I felt like he was a good fit for me. Um, but really what today's episode is going to be is just sharing our story. Um, so many people after we announced our relationship, which thank you guys so much for just the support and the love. So many people were like, please share with us. Like, how did this come about? Who is he? What's his story? And so that's what today's episode is going to be. Are you excited? I'm so, it's been wild. Um, I'm excited to finally share, you know, just what has happened. Because it has been, it's been seven months for her, but it's been about a year and a half uh, for me, or a couple of years for me. Yeah. It's been a journey. Which is so crazy. We really wanted to make sure that we were in a good spot before sharing our relationship. And it wasn't like we were like, oh yeah, we have something to hide. It's just mm -hmm. that from my experience, I do have a lot of, uh, is it safe to say the word trauma? I would say trauma is a, a great word for that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> not, not to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> not, I, not yes, <laughs> trauma. So yeah, I would say that I have a lot of trauma things, around things you've gone through around posting a public relationship only because I had a public breakup that went extremely poorly well I mean poorly <laughs> poorly well technically it went poorly well <laughs> that didn't make any sense extremely poorly it got some good views it, so. baby that's not what it's about <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, my brain goes back to that, which I'm working with a therapist through that. That was why I was like, no, I can't post. I can't post. But we feel really ready. And now we're in this. So it wasn't like we were like, let's hide it. But we wanted to make sure that we were ready and that our relationship was in a good, yeah. healthy spot. Because inevitably, when you do bring in the public eye, there's opinions, there's obstacles, there's oppositions, all the O's, whatever that come within a public relationship. And so we were like, let's make sure you and I are good mm -hmm. before bringing in people's opinions. Even just posting and seeing so many nice things 
said about yourself is even like it can get to your head but yeah and here we are and i'm really excited to have everyone know who you are because i love this man you've been the biggest blessing in my life and a lot of people are looking at my story just saying like well your story gives me hope before we get into the podcast let's just talk about who you are so tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your background I feel like I'm like interviewing for a job. Well, he, okay. So partially, this is kind of funny. The reason why we're able to film this on a Thursday is because he's starting a new job on Monday. So he's had the whole week off, which has been really, really fun. So we're filming this on a Thursday and he starts a new job on Monday. So yeah. maybe tell them who you are and then also what you do. Okay. Yeah. So I am Caleb Ward. I grew up in hometown of uh, Cashin, Oklahoma. I kind of like Janine. I was homeschooled the majority of my life. I did <laughs> graduate high school, so I'm not uh, too weird. Well, you did go to public high school after a while. Yeah. Out of high school, I moved to New York. I was going to chase my dreams. And then that's- You went to Pace University there for a little bit. Went to business school, fell off a skateboard, dislocated mm. my patella tendon. Um, but New York is actually kind of what led me to Janine when I was uh, 19 years old. So one little of my baby. closest friends. So when I moved to New York, I was really praying for you know godly community. Uh, and I didn't really have that. And- randomly bumped into this guy on the street um and we got to talking and he ended up being a christian and now he's like one of my closest friends and i joined his small group he actually went to hillsong at the time in new york city and um a couple of years later he's from california so i was out visiting him in california uh and that's what led me to janine so one of janine's uh, close friends i actually met and we 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 what <laughs> Tell them so, what you did. <laughs> so what's funny is she's actually this, her friend is uh, a vegan and uh, took her to lunch and in my hometown of Oklahoma. And there's like dead, like deer on the wall. And, nice baby. And so it goes to show it didn't work out. Uh, it went, had lunch for an hour and then sweet girl, not, you know, she actually texted me and was like, Hey, I'm sorry. This isn't, this isn't going <laughs> to work Ouch, out. She pulled so, the plug. Yeah. So, about a year year or so later, uh, I felt the Lord calling me to Dallas. And so... Fun fact, we both felt in the same month of, of September... The same week of September. Same week of September that the Lord was calling us back to Dallas. So just to show you, like, it goes back to even, like, 2020. And, like, there's other things that I'll get to in that as well. Mm -hmm. But that the Lord told me very distinctly in f that month that I was going to be moving back and I was not going to live alone and then that, mm -hmm. that I would meet my husband in Texas. Well, it's crazy because I didn't move back to Dallas. I'd, I've never, I've been to Dallas like a few times when I decided to move here. I had just moved, I was living in Australia prior to uh, moving back home because of COVID. Uh, and then, yeah, I was uh, just, I was like, let's do it. So I moved to Dallas. I was sitting alone in this apartment uh, on New Year's, I think it was Eve, New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. And, uh, this. Sorry, my arm is literally pulsing. Like it's like fully pulsing. Do you feel just, hold, just hold my hand. You'll be, okay. you'll be fine. It felt weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> so her friend Allie posted a photo of Janine. I was sitting alone in this apartment and she posted a photo of her and Janine. And I was like, no one looks like that. <laughs> I've, she, if anyone doesn't know, she's half Guatemalan and half German. I have never seen a half Guatemalan and half German. And I was like, this is the most beautiful human I have ever seen in my entire oh, life. Stop. <laughs> You're making me blush. And I was like, okay, like this is, she's very pretty. And then, so I click on her profile and I was like, oh, okay. No shot. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Why'd you say that? I just was like, there's, there's no way. But I was holding on. I was like, okay, me and Allie left on very good terms. She had nothing but great things to say about me. Which so, is a great way, a great testimony to you of mm -hmm. leaving people better than you found them and ending well. Yeah. Because later we'll get to that. Yeah. But yeah. So I went ahead and followed her on Instagram. So I already knew uh, where I was going to church. And I, and I don't know if this is lying. It's lying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I, I DM'd her and I was like, hey, so I just moved to Dallas. I uh, just wanted to see if uh, you knew of any great churches in the area. That's the most like Christian <laughs> cliche thing to do. Well, you kept posting about Jesus. So I was like, yeah. you know, here, I'm just going to come in here with, I, it sounds bad. I guess I wasn't trying to manipulate Jesus, but I just. I get it. You wanted you know. to make sure that I knew from the get go that you also love Jesus. Exactly. 
That's so funny. And so, but the, at the time, I didn't know she was going to move back to Dallas. I knew she lived in Dallas because of some of her post. And so I was like, oh, oh, you knew I was from Dallas. I knew you were from Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. And so she responded. And I don't remember this, which we'll get to that, but I don't remember responding I'm, at all. I'm laying in bed and she responds and I'm like, we are getting married. Like, <laughs> I, w- I might be a little psycho, but I was yeah. like, okay, we have a, sh- we have traction. Gosh, she here. responded. We have, we have traction. And so uh, <laughs> she was like, yeah, you, you should go to blah, 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 this church and this church is great. And I was like, awesome. I was like, uh, <laughs> I said, uh, do you, do you serve anywhere? <laughs> Oh my gosh. It was bad. It was bad. I think I was still, I I'm a lot less homeschooled now, but like then, like a few years ago, I still had that. Like I just left Hillsong college. I still was, you know, yeah, you were in like the typical, like Christian, uh, you know, what's, I was on fire. Little Christian boy. I was, I was on fire. She doesn't respond. And I'm like, okay, that sucks. Yep. So the next week, um, I end up going to the porch. And so, we're sitting there and I'm like, I'm, which is a young adult ministry here in Dallas. Yeah. So I took a photo, you know, uh, I think JD was speaking. And so I took a photo that I was there and, uh, I was like at the porch and did you like, did you tag the porch in your story? No. Okay. This is still a mystery to me, but go ahead. So she responds to my story. This is in 2021, by the way. Yeah. 2021, uh, responds to my story. I think it's like January or February. And I uh, said, you went, she said, you went, what are your thoughts? And I remember I was sitting in bed and I screenshot it and I, well, I'll have to show this sometime. I screenshot it and uh, I'm on FaceTime with all the homies and I'm like, guys, she wants me. (laughs) She wants me. And um, I was like, yeah, it was amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, And she doesn't respond. Nope. And I'm like, okay. I had a habit of doing that. But she liked one of my photos too. And so I was like, she responded to my story and she liked it. And I was like, okay, I can do something with that. <laughs> and so some you time, some, I think a couple months went by and uh, you, you finally announced that you were moving to Dallas Yeah. and uh, you did a poll because you were looking to buy a house and uh, you asked your followers, you're like, uh, are you guys interested in, in uh, is anyone interested in the market and looking to buy a house? And I accidentally clicked on the poll and I said, no. And I was like, dang it, I didn't mean to say no. Like, so then you responded to my story. I was like, hey, by the way, I didn't mean to say no. And you were like, oh, are you looking for a house? And I was like, oh, you know, maybe in the Whatever. future. Whatever. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm kind of in the market right now, maybe like in a year or so. I didn't r- really have plans to maybe buy a house. I sound like I'm lying. Yeah, baby, much. you definitely didn't have plans to buy a house. I was just trying to like. You try- trying to keep the conversation going. I was trying to sound older. That's what I was trying uh, to do. Yeah. We'll get into that. We'll get later. into that. Okay. So I actually don't like, I don't know why I do not remember responding. I'm not remember. Then I like, I go and stop. It's just, I get a lot of DMs. So I go back, not from guys, just in general. <laughs> That's uh, maybe. cap. That's cap. Okay. Whatever. I go back. How and many DMs I, today? I, a lot. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I don't want to sound prideful. I'm, I'm Listen, done talking about that. If, but I don't remember responding. I really genuinely don't. It's okay. It meant the world to me. Oh, that's good. So, <laughs> but, okay, let's fast forward. Hang on a sec. So, in my head, I'm. this is kind of, this turns into a joke in my friend group. I don't actually think her and I are really ever going to work out. It was kind of more like, you know, she's very beautiful, um, but I don't think our paths will ever cross until... Today's episode is happily sponsored by Belinkus, and I am so excited to be partnering up with them because I think this is a company you guys are going to absolutely love. So basically what Blinkus is, it's an app that enables you to understand the most important things from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. So there's this one book, for example, by Donald Miller called Marketing Made Simple. I just simply don't have time to read the book. However, I've been really interested in that book and now I can learn about the best parts of the book within 15 minutes. It's such a great idea just because with Blinkist, you can discover new perspectives, broaden your horizons, have exciting conversations, and you can learn information just so much quicker. So if you're on a time crunch or if you're just someone that is really eager to learn in a more convenient, effective way, definitely check out Blinkist. 
So if you guys do want to check it out, right now Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash healthy to start your seven-day free trial and get 25% off a Blinkist premium membership. That's Blinkist spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. Blinkist.com slash healthy to get 25% off and a seven-day free trial. Blinkist.com slash healthy. Now for a limited time, you can even use Blinkist Connect to share your premium account. You will get two premium subscriptions for the price of one. So you're also learning and saving money. It'll be linked in the show notes as well as the YouTube description. Check it out. Uh, October, 2021, I'm like, I'm going to run a marathon. And I'd never run more than like a few miles in my life. And I was like, I'm going to run a marathon. (laughs) So I start training at our lake around here in Dallas. And uh, (laughs) and so I'm out there and I'm running. And uh, she all of a sudden I hear this girl with a very distinct voice (laughs) and I'm like, I've heard that voice before. And, uh, sure enough, this girl comes on like a skateboard, just hauling booty. (laughs) Like she's going so fast and, and I'm running and, uh, we make eye contact and I'm like, I distinctly, I distinctly remember just like locking eyes the whole for like a good really good bit of time i don't remember you might have been looking past me but i was definitely looking oh at you. yeah <laughs> and uh and so i text the boys and i'm like guys i just saw janine you know around the lake this sounds like an episode from like netflix or whatever yeah the show but you <laughs> some, some time goes by i'm getting my haircut and i look out the window and janine is walking into my coffee shop and, and wasn't i with maddie or something you, yeah you were with maddie yeah uh you walk into a coffee shop Um, and so this is when I started to realize we run in the same circle. We have a lot of the same friends, a lot of the same community. And, uh, I was like, okay, like this is interesting. And so July 4th comes, it's 2022. Um, Janine's out of my head. Like I, I mean, I was not in a place where I was like, I want to date. I genuinely wasn't. I, neither was I, I had gotten out of a relationship, which I've talked about this a relationship that ended very clean, very amicable. Um, I was more grieving the idea of like, oh dang, I thought I'd be getting married this year. But the relationship ended really well. But we broke up a month and a half prior to this. And so for the July rolls around. And which is funny because about a month before July 4th, I was with my friends and I had inquired, I think every three months. And I was like, I don't think Janine has a boyfriend anymore. And they were like, no, Caleb, she does. And I was like, I don't know. I sent some things off in her, you know, demeanor. Which is scary because it's like, y'all, this is just a testimony to who he is. A, very strong discernment. B, reads me like a book, which is really annoying because sometimes I want to hide things, which I know, like, I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. She's never He fine. can always understand and, like, read me, like, so easily. Yeah. Uh, so you knew that without me saying anything. And I didn't even know that you knew that I had a boyfriend at the time. Well, you know... Sometimes the church groups can be the biggest talkers. Gossipers? Yeah. 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 We're Um, working on that, right? (laughs) And so July 4th rolls around. I had just accepted a job promotion uh, in Orlando. So I was about to move uh, to Orlando at the end of July. The party that we're at is in Louisville, Texas. And one of my best friends lives in Louisville, Texas. Uh, We knew there was two 4th of July parties happening. Mm -hmm. Um, And without looking, I clicked on the wrong address. And so me and my buddies pull up and, and we're like, this is the wrong house. And they're like, well, you know, let's just still go. And I was like, I think we might know a couple of people here. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm walking in. Wait, wait, let me share my backstory too. Okay. So yeah, it was 4th of July and I had just come from another one that my friends and I were hosting. I was with all my married friends. Um, I had just found out that day that Grant had told me, he's like, Jay, I'm going to propose to Maddie. So like, I was in like a whirlwind where I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be single forever. And I was with my friend, Nico, Nico, <laughs> Nico, N- Nico. Obviously. I was going to say Nicoletta and Nico, but it's Nico. We're going to call her are Nico. Are you sure you're friends? <laughs> yeah, we are friends. So I was with my friend, Nicoletta and the party had ended and I was like kind of moping a little bit. Like I was like, dang, like that's, this is like a really weird season for me. You weren't moping. You were angry. About what? <laughs> you were angry. <laughs> okay, call me out. Okay. So she's like, okay, Jay, let's go to this other 4th of July party. And I was kind of like, to be honest, I just want to go home. And she was like, no, like, just come to the party with me. She's like, there's two parties in Louisville. And she's like, if one stinks, we'll go to the other one. And I was like, okay, fine. 
So we're driving over to the 4th of July party and I'm actually like crying in the car with her. Like, I'm like, I'm frustrated at God. Like, I feel like why, you know, why are people getting this desire that I want? And like, I was just really wrestling with the, the breakup and like just feeling like lonely and like seasons were changing in my life. I knew seasons were about to change. So I had just come from crying in the car and she's like, okay, we got this. So I like put my makeup back on, put my sunglasses back on. And she's like, let's go to this one place. And we're like, okay, bet. You looked so good. <laughs> Thank you. But I, the, as I walk in the party, the first person I see is Caleb. I was embarrassed too. Why? I, tell him what I was wearing. He had a backwards hat, which you guys will see. He loves hats. Also, yeah, I don't have a huge bald spot, by the way. <laughs> I just love hats. He does love hats. And so he had a backwards hat on. He had an Oklahoma City jersey where he's wearing his like Nike dunks or whatever. And I thought for sure, which am I allowed to say this word? I wouldn't say the word, but you. The, I thought he was a D-bag. Yeah, I thought. But I, was, I walked in and I was like, that is the hottest D-bag I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, I walk in. I'm like, I swear this is not who I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, but we locked eyes. So, OK, then like we, locked let me eyes. Give my backstory. OK, so I haven't seen, you know, Janine in a while. And I'm like, so I, I walk in and it's the, she's the first person that I see. And immediately my buddies start hitting me. They're like, Gail, Gail, Gail. look, I'm like, I see her guys. Like, like, stop. Relax. Yeah. I see her. And, uh, my whole friend group was like, Caleb, Janine, go talk to her. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm not talking to her. I can't do it. Number one, I'm not talking to her, uh, because I'm scared. But number two, like this isn't, she doesn't look approachable. Yeah. Let's just say what he describes it as is RBF. Yeah. Like bad. It, she had sunglasses. Because like I said, I just come from crying and yeah. I put my sunglasses on. The hands were on the hips. The sunglasses were on. And I think I was just not in a very social mood at that point. Yeah. Cause I had just been like a little upset. But you were tan. Uh, you, you were so tan. <laughs> I'm, I'm like getting nervous when you say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking with one of my buddies and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to talk to her. I, I made it up in that mind. I'm like, I'm going to approach her. And as I like finally gathered my confidence to, to like, she was to my right, like literally like two steps behind me to my right. And I go to like say hello. And then this girl walks up to Janine and goes, hello, Janine. I, I know that you don't know me, but my name's blah, 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 blah. It's so nice to meet you. And I was like, dang it. And the Lord was like, nope. I was like, I am not about to fanboy or whatever and i was like this isn't the time this isn't the place um and so i i i didn't go up to you uh but it was funny um i i was sitting next to uh, this other girl at the party and i just remember like trying to be extra this is so toxic of me and like this is like actually something that <laughs> i should, admit should it. repent for um because that's it's not a good but i was like being extra i feel like probably a little flirty a little louder um, just to get your attention. Um, well, it kind of worked. And yeah. And so, okay. So from my, from my side, this is actually kind of funny because like I said, I walk in, he's the first person I see. And so it's funny cause his buddies were hitting him being like, Oh my God, there's Janine. There's Janine. I hit my friend Nicoletta and I literally like tapped her and I was like, who is that? And this is where it's funny because she goes at the time, Caleb was 23. Uh, we'll get into that. And 23 she, sounds so much sounds younger. Sounds like a little child. child. Well, no, <laughs> don't say child. Okay. Young man. Young, distinguished <laughs> this man. sounds like a really young man. Look at man. this young, distinguished man. Look at the way he's sitting. Yes. He's sitting very delightful. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend Nicoletta's like, Jay, don't even try it. She's like, um, he's 23. He's moving into Orlando in two weeks and every girl wants him. She was like, don't even try it. And I was like, all right, sick. In this point in my life, I had basically told the Lord, I was like, God, I want a story that you write. I don't want to initiate it. I don't want to pursue it. I don't want to be the person that goes up to the guy first or says something first or DMs him first. I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. And so even though everything within me was like, dang, I really want to talk to him. Like there was something in me. I was like, I was attracted to you. And I was like, I really want this guy to talk to me. I was like, I'm not doing it. And also when I found out you were younger, I was like, yeah, that'd be kind of weird. And so I kind of tried to drop it. Mm -hmm. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I kind of want him to talk to me. And then I left the party thinking I would never see you again. 
this is like, and I thought that too. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't oh, think anything of it. Yeah. Th- like I, there's, there was no shot. And so I'm laying there uh, that night with my buddies in my apartment. We all passed out of sleep. It's like 10 o'clock and my phone goes off. I get a notification and uh, I look at it and it's Janine and Apola followed me on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, first of all, I am so stoked. Second of all, I'm super embarrassed because I'm like, if she hits that message tab. Well, I did. Uh, yeah. So I followed him on Instagram, but here's a little bit of that. So after the 4th of July party, I also was like, okay, he's younger. I'm never going to see this dude again, whatever. So I kind of just like dropped it, even though it was like a little bit in the back of my mind. I'm scrolling on Instagram. I'm doing my nightly stalking as we all do. <laughs> and I'm going through my friend's stories and my guy friend, Aiden, who is actually both of our friends, he posted Caleb in his Instagram story. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's that guy from the party. So of course I naturally am curious. I clicked on his page and saw that you were already following me. And I was like, are you kidding? I me? was loyal for a year and a half. <laughs> I did not unfollow you after all your Even though you wanted to. rudeness towards me. Whoa, whoa, and whoa. Unresponsive attitude. So I'm like, he's following me. And then it, all the pieces started to click where I was like, oh, that's why he looked at me like that. Because it wasn't just like a regular, like, oh, hey, what is a cute guy? Like you looked at me. And so I, I was like, that look made a lot more sense. Because then it made it more, it like clicked where I was like, oh, he knew who I was. So then I was like, let me just see if you've DM me before. <laughs> and then I go back to when you had DM me from January, 2021. And when you DM me too. And I'm scrolling up and I was like, I responded. Like I was so flabbergasted because I didn't remember at all that I had already like talked to you. Did you say flabbergasted? Yes. I was homeschooled <laughs> <laughs> and I'm older. So I just like went through his stuff. I was like, okay, who is this guy? So I'm like looking through his thing, trying to see if he loved Jesus, found some TikToks, found some cheesy ones. You know, I didn't let that cross off who he was. They were just videos about cryptocurrency. And prime drinks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Now you're blushing. So I just was like, whatever, I'll just follow him. But I really didn't think anything of it. And I also was like, this is weird. Like this guy's younger than me. This is weird. So then two weeks goes by and I told him, I was like, I'm not initiating. I'm not DMing. I'm not doing anything. I just followed him back. Another two weeks goes by. So then two weeks goes by. So two weeks goes by. Um, and it's I had, a hot, hot summer day, hot, hot summer day. Uh, the day before I was getting, um, coffee with Aiden, the guy who posted me on a story that led me to you. Yeah. Um, and I told him, I said, Hey, I'm moving to Orlando. Janine followed me on Instagram. If you see her, and I kind of said this as a joke, but it's hilarious now. <laughs> I said, Aiden, I know I'm going to be in Orlando and I'm never going to see Janine again. Uh, but will you tell her that I'm, I'm going to marry her and I will literally, I don't think I've told you this. I literally told her, I was like, I'm going to marry her. I'm going to fly back. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to marry her. And I was like, kind of, Whoa. I was kind of joking, but I also was like, I'm going to be in Orlando so he can say that. And it doesn't really you know, have I some weight to yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't have too much weight. If she's flattered, she could maybe reach out. And whatever. I didn't think Aiden would actually tell me that. Do yeah. you think he actually would? Yeah, no, I, I I made him promise he would tell tell you that. Wow. Yeah, and so I sound wow, I ladies. Sound, I sound crazy. Yeah, but I mean, okay, this is kind of funny though because before like meeting you, like when I was in like my little season of like praying again of like Lord, what do I want in a relationship and in a story. I always prayed that a, like a man would see me and know that I, that he wanted to be with me. And I prayed that it wouldn't be me convincing a person like, Hey, please like me. Or, Hey, do you want to be with me? Like I prayed for someone to see me and, and like the Lord not have shown me the person until the time was right. I prayed specifically over and over and over before meeting Caleb. I said, Lord, do not even open my eyes. Do not even open the door. Do not even show me the person until it is time, until it is the right person, until I am ready to be ready for that person. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because it's like, you had seen me so many other times, even before dating my ex. And I never saw you. I don't remember seeing you at the lake. Like I don't remember any of those. Yeah. And so I feel like the Lord was like hiding you from me until he knew that I was ready, but he was preparing you for me before that. Yeah. And it sounds crazy. You say that's true? Yeah, I would say, I would say a lot of that's true, but I think you might ask, like, why did you like her so much? She had such a good repu- reputation within our friend group and within our community. 
and just viewing from the outside, I'm like, this is, this is every guy's, you know, take everything aside of whatever that she does. Janine as a human and as somebody who's planted in Christ and it's mm-hmm. obviously and apart from beautiful, you know, it's like, that's the kind of girl guys dream to be. with. Um, mm-hmm. And so that being said, Janine starts to kind of plant herself around the general area that which that I lived uh, and where I live, there's a, this beautiful pool. Um, it's a very hot summer day. It's like 105 degrees. It was like the, one of the hottest summers mm-hmm. in like 20 years or something. My, my brother's in town. He's like, I, I want to go to the pool and I didn't really want to go. Um, and well, okay. Let's not make me look too bad here because this pool is a very nice big pool. That's like a little bit away from my house. I had tons of friends that lived in this area. I posted on my close friends. I was like, can anyone please get me into this pool? And my friend Cooper was like, yeah, we can go. So I brought Nicoletta with me again. Cooper and I go. It, like I said, hottest day. I don't have a pool in my backyard. I have no access to a pool. And that was the closest pool I'd been to because I'd been in this shopping center all the time. Maddie and I, like I said, go to the buzz and bustle around there. And so I was like, that's the one pool I know to go to. And it just happened to be a pool that you lived by. Yeah. And so she and I was also kind of hoping maybe I'd see him. But she posted a photo that she was there. And so all, of course, all my friends send that to me. Like Janine's there. Go talk to her. This is your chance. And, um, they had started to think that you were going there to run into me. And I was like, ah, I don't know. And so I was pretty nervous and I was like, I don't want to bump into her at the <clears> pool <throat> while she's in her swimsuit. That's weird. Yeah. So I actually, I actually stayed Longer at my apartment, so I wouldn't accidentally bump into you. So I looked. I was like, "Oh, she was there three hours ago. She's probably not there anymore." Respectful man. Which is why it's weird. It's 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 weird that I was trying to avoid you at the same time that I was like, w- I don't know. I just got nervous. You really did have like a discernment on like the timing. Like you you really did. And so we're walking to the pool. I'm wearing a Hawaiian button up. Oh my gosh! And uh, as I'm walking in, she's driving away. away. Yeah. And she gave me a nice little weird gesture to myself. And I was like, yeah, it was weird because I was driving by and I was literally like laughing in my head. I was kind of like, Oh, it'd be so funny if I saw him. But then I was like, now I'm leaving now. So like, I won't, there's no more chances left of seeing him. And as I'm driving away, of course, the freaking person that I was like, maybe like trying to avoid slash like maybe hoping I'd see, I see. And it was you. And as I'm driving away, I see you walking towards me and I'm like getting nervous. I start panicking. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's that guy. There's that guy. I'm like, there's the Caleb guy. And so as I'm driving past you, I, we like lock eyes again. And I like freaking like freaked out. And I like did this like awkward, like half wave, like lifted my hand. It was so weird. And I was like, why did you do that? She looked annoyed. If you're just listening, you're not watching. She like, she like looked at me weird and like gave me a weird hand gesture that I was like not supposed to be there. And I waved at her and I was like, "Uh huh. Yeah. And I literally like drove away. I was like, you idiot, idiot, idiot. Like I just felt stupid. I was like, why did you do that? You made me nervous. (laughs) And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, do we try this one more time? Because I didn't say this after she followed me, I DM'd her and she didn't respond. I think it's like twice, right? Just once. Okay. 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 And so I was in LA actually back with my friend Allie that he found out about me through. And he DM me one more time and I didn't respond. I don't know why I just didn't. I was like, I don't know this dude. So I didn't respond. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there at the pool and I'm like, this is the last time. And then I'll have my piece. And so I messaged her and I said, this time I responded to her story. Cause I was like, maybe, sh- maybe there's a, a different portal of which that I could enter her heart. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so I said, I hope that was you that I just waved at. And then I threw my phone and I was like, you psycho. Yep. And uh, she didn't respond for four hours later, but she responded. Yeah. So I take a nap. I'm doing my business, whatever. Um, I check my Instagram later, babe. What? And I was not on the toilet. Okay. You were doing your business. <laughs> I was, I was like, just doing my thing. And I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I see a DM from you. And I'm like, he DM'd me. And you were like, was that you? I, I hope that was you that I just saw that I just waved to, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what do I say? And so I think I waited a little bit. Yeah, three hours on scene. I waited a little bit and then I was with Maddie. And so Maddie and I were still living with each other at this point. And I start telling her about this guy. I'm like, 
Maddie, I don't know what any of this means. He's younger. That's like really weird to me. He's really attractive. I don't know what to think about this. I'm like, he just DM'd me. And um, I'm like, Maddie, like, help me. What do I say back? Like, I was just like, kind you were, of. You were a little more excited. I, like, No, I was really excited. But I was also kind of like, what do I do about this? Because I knew that you were moving. I knew that you were younger. And I knew that I was in like a little weird space in my own head. So I was like, what do I do? So I'm like processing this with Maddie. And I'm like, Maddie, what do I say? And no, actually, I responded first. And then I said, um, unless that was my long lost twin. Yes, that was me that you saw. And then you were like, uh, I said, it's crazy. I've seen you so much but we've never actually spoken. And and then you said- And I said what Maddie told me to say because I didn't know what to say. Blaming Maddie. And no, I'm not even blaming Maddie. was like the mastermind behind it. Shouts to Maddie. Maddie goes, tell him, um, well, next time you see me, don't be so shy and say, hey. And I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> so I sent that and it was a perfect segue. I'm at Kava, I'm by myself. And she said, don't be so shy next time. And I was like, we've made it. We've arrived at our destination. I, I was so honest from the very beginning. I said- I'm moving to Orlando in two weeks, um, but I would love to take you on a date if you're open to it. So he asked me out on a date and I'm again with Maddie and I'm like, we're like reading the messages together and I'm like, Maddie, am I crazy? I'm like, should I go on a date with this guy? Like, is this dumb? I literally was like so nervous. I was like, is it even the right timing? And she was like, Jay, it's just a date. Just say yes. Like you don't know what's going to happen. And I was like, okay. So I responded. We basically figured out a whole date. Mm -hmm. He gave me two options. He's like, or he said, give me two options. I gave him two dates. He picked the first one so that if it worked out well, he could see me again a second time, which was very smart on your behalf and very tactical on mine. <laughs> How was the date? How was the first and date? So yeah, we, we go on this first date. I'm like so nervous. I am like, I literally feel crazy. Like, and I will get to the age thing, but like, I felt kind of crazy going on a date with a 23 year old. But it was interesting because one of my friends had just married someone that was five years apart. She'd married someone that was five years younger than her. Her name's Kate Wartman. You guys might've heard of her, The Heart of Dating. We're four and a half younger. Four and a half years younger. And there were five and a half years, actually. They're five and a half years. So based off hearing her story, I was like, okay, I shouldn't write things off. You know, expect the unexpected. You don't know what, could, what God can do. It's just a date. I'll give it a shot. So he asked me out, he picks me up. I am so nervous. I'm like, I don't get nervous for days. She's grabbing her hair. I'm like, if you're watching the YouTube video, I'm like brushing through my hair. I'm like picking at my jeans. I'm sweating. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Pull yourself together. And I missed every exit. Every exit. Every exit. On the way to it the took date. us an hour and 15 minutes to get to the restaurant. But it was so fun because we just like warmed up in the car. Yeah, we the, had some banter. The, the and nerves stopped. And uh, I gave you a tour of the beautiful skyline of yeah. Dallas. Yeah, it was like he gave me the whole tour of Dallas. I was like, not like I don't live here. I also went to the wrong door uh, when I Yeah, he went up. to my next door neighbor's house. Yeah. And so it was a total. It was so funny. The big, I gave her a hug and I'm like, so how was your day? She's getting in the car and she's like, it was good. And I shut the door. <laughs> before she's she like, it was good. <laughs> shut the door. <laughs> and I get in the car. The first thing I go, I go, so, uh. You're nervous? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no. I'm not nervous. I was like, no, I don't get nervous. Yeah. Uh, I like straight up lied through my teeth, even though I was so nervous. Sinner. I'm a sinner. And so. But yeah, we're on this date and. Oh, it was so much fun. Oh my gosh. It was so much fun. I mean, eye contact. I was attracted to you. We were like messing with the waiter. We end up like sharing the gospel with the waiter. We're like laughing with each other. Like we hardly ate our food. Hardly. I didn't, I didn't touch. It was terrible. First of all, it's kind of bad, but it secondly, terrible, it, but it wasn't great. It wasn't great, but also like, I think we were so nervous yeah. that no we're appetite. like, we're like barely eating our food. But I mean, I remember just like laughing with you. We were there for three hours. Joking. And like, oddly enough, one of his friends shows up at the restaurant the same night and sits right next to us. It was wild. It was it, crazy. It was hilarious. And, um, and she's like taking pictures of him, like sending to him. She's like, I see you. Like, I remember seeing them and I was like. Oh no, <laughs> but uh, I remember going to the bathroom and um, I was sending memes to the bros and I'm like, it's going unbelievably well. Yeah. And I'm same. being, you know, I went into it with like, I'm going to be so unapologetically myself. And I, same. I have two weeks. I'm like, I don't, I texted before I went on the date and I said 90, that's so funny. I said 97% chance Janine breaks my heart before I leave for Orlando. <laughs> so I was like, this isn't going to work out. Logistics do not weigh in my favor. Nothing made sense at this time. And so 
We left the restaurant. We took photos. He asked to hold my hand. We're driving back to my house. Well, that makes me sound a little homeschooled. No. We were we were leaving the restaurant, and I reached out and I said, "May may I, that sounds homeschooled." No, it's no, it's sweet. I actually appreciated that. I appreciated you versus just like grabbing it. Mm-hmm. I appreciated that. So it's not homeschooled. It's just being respectful. Thank so you. Thank you. So anyway, we tell him about the drive home. We're driving home. He's turned. He blasts Cody Johnson, which is one of my favorite country artists. We're looking at the Dallas skyline. We're holding hands. We're turning up the music. And like, I feel like on a first date, normally it's super awkward if there's any silence. So you're like trying to fill it. You're like fidgeting. You're like, oh, so tell me about your mom. Like you're trying to fill the space. <laughs> tell, me you're, about your mom. tell me about your grandmother, Jean. What is your trauma look like? <laughs> Stop that. We didn't get into that at that point. But basically it was so comfortable where I was like, this is weird. And I felt like I had known you my whole life. I had felt so comfortable. Even the waiter didn't believe. He was like, this is your first date? We asked. He we, didn't believe it. We asked him, how long do you think we've been together? And he goes, oh, a couple of years. Yeah, he was like, I have a long time. And we were like, this is our first date. And he was like, no. That waiter still DMs me to this day. Yeah, we love him. What's his name? Federico. Federico. Fed- yeah. Federico. So anyway, he pulls up to my house and we're kind of, I'm like, where do we go from here? Like, I was not expect. I expected to see you once and never again. Oh, sorry to say that. <laughs> That's wild. No, kind of same. Yeah, like we both didn't think anything would come up. We're like, well, let's just give it a shot, whatever. Yeah, I feel like I kind of, I thought that if you were open to it, I was like, I think we could make it work. But I definitely, after dinner, so she's in my car and I look at her and I said, listen, I know I'm moving in two weeks. I was like, if you can give me 20%, I'll give you 80%. He did. That was a bold move. He basically just told me how he felt and that he wanted to pursue me and that you were willing to fly me out to Orlando so that we could spend more time together and get to know each other. And you just said some bold things where I was very overwhelmed at first. Like I was like, whoa, like this is a lot. But I never had a guy do that from the get-go where it was just so like straightforward. You told me your intentions. You were clear you didn't play any games like I wasn't used to that and so I was like whoa this is a lot but deep down inside I actually really liked it because I wasn't used to that I think I went against every single advice piece that you see on TikTok as far as guys go yeah because I was like here are my cards I'm moving I don't I'm not dating other people uh this is a huge commitment but also we have two weeks let's let's see what this these two weeks are about yeah and uh yeah it's interesting because like i think in christian dating or even what worldly tiktok dating advice it's like play a game play hard to get don't respond too fast don't do this don't and like we didn't do any of that one one of my mentors told me he was like if everybody's playing the same game and then you are undoubtedly yourself that's the best game you can play because no one else is doing that yeah and she's seen the way every guy has acted but she hasn't seen you personally. Yeah. And so if you are just yourself, she's never seen that. She, she has nothing to compare it to. And at least it can be new and it can be fresh. And so we went on a date the next... The next two days afterwards? Two days yeah, after. two days later. And it was just like, again, same thing. Mm-hmm. Like so fun, so easy. We got in like the best conversation. And I just like, I was crushing. And I was like, what is happening? Because... Like I said, at this time, I was processing a lot of emotions. Um, I knew life was about to change. I had just recently, a month and a half ago, broke up with this guy. You had so much traveling coming up. Travel. Like, life was crazy. And I was like, where does a relationship fit into it, this? He's moving away. Like It doesn't, it doesn't fit into it. It didn't. That's what's yeah, crazy. exactly. It didn't. And then she went to my going away party. Yeah, which he invited me to it. And again, I texted some friends. I was like, I I think this is too soon. Should I go? I process everything with my community because I knew that this was a lot. And I, especially the age thing, like really, I don't want to like harbor on that too much, but it really was a big factor for me because you were younger. I knew it was something that my family would freak out over. I knew it was like a weird to say like I'm dating someone younger. I never imagined that. I never expected that. I never thought that would would be what I would t- like typically go for. It's not what I typically go for. And so I processed a lot of this with my friends at the time, just being like, okay, am I going at the right pace? Correct me if I'm wrong. Should I go to the going away party? And my friends were like, no, you should go. Like, why not? And I was like, okay. They're like, you have a limited time to like kind of get to know this guy. Like use it to your advantage. So go. And I did. Yeah. And I think that was the big shift 
and trust and you got to see my community and my guys. Like I have yeah, the best. Yeah, that helped me so much. I have the best guy friends. Like, oh my gosh. If, I got to see the way people affirmed you, spoke life over you, like people pray over you, meet all your buddies. I was like, whoa, this guy's surrounded by like the coolest people. If you're a single girl, just, I, I got some of the best dudes in my corner. Yeah, you need to date a dude that has good friends for sure. And then, um, yeah, spent that next week and a half. The next week and a half, learning about each other, hanging out, enjoying each other, talking about everything. Like, we got into our stories actually pretty fast, probably the third or second date, third third date. Fourth date. Fourth date. Um, got to share some stuff, my past a little bit. Not everything, but I got to open up about some stuff. Yeah. it just And you didn't run away. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it felt so normal. And, uh, and easy, so very easy. We were automatically just like being ourselves. And then the day before I leave for Orlando, she panics pretty, pretty hard. Panicked. And I was a little bit of a theme. Yeah. The for pa- the first three, four months. Uh, I, the panicking would, would come usually when we were at like a high point. Yeah. And so yeah. The, I leave for Orlando. Uh, we basically say like, Hey, we don't, she wrote me a letter and it was like, I don't know what's going to happen. It felt like a goodbye letter almost. <laughs> and I remember reading it. She wrote me this letter and I was so excited to read it. I never told you this. Oh. And I pulled out of her house and I parked down the street and I read it and I just deflated. Oh. And I was like, sorry. this doesn't seem like, this seems like the sweetest letter, but this seems like a, you treated me amazing. I, this was amazing two weeks. Uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, I don't know where this is going to come from here, but you have so much potential and so much going for you in life. And I was like, yeah. that is the nicest, most horrible thing I've ever read in my <laughs> life. And so I'm dead. Me and my two best friends, Austin and Hunter, we head to Orlando together. Uh, they rode with me uh, to move all my stuff. And it was the most, like, I, I was pretty down. I was super i didn't want to be in orlando i was like i i'm gonna trust you lord like i don't want to do this i wanted to stay in dallas i wanted to be with her i was like why am i moving i have the most amazing community here i started to kind of just regret i was like why why am i doing this i was so used to traveling so much before i came to dallas so it just after i was here for a couple years i was like okay this is my next time to move yeah um and then we took four days once i moved i uh, I said, let's go four days. And so I felt it that she was panicking so bad that I felt like if we kept talking, it was just going to get weird. And I didn't think it was going to, I thought something was just going to not work. So I told her, I was like, let's go four days. Let's give this to the Lord. Let's pray about it. Uh, fast about it. Talk to our community. Mm-hmm. I'm about you. Like, I yeah. know I want this, but your wishy-washiness, yeah. I can't do, especially if I'm in a different state. So you let me know four days give it to the Lord. And my buddies were still with me in Orlando and you didn't need to apologize to them because (laughs) they got to just, you know, we didn't have, I didn't have much fun on our vacation. Uh, cause I was just like, man, I, I I don't, that that was such an amazing two weeks, but I feel like this isn't going to work. And then four days later. Yeah. So from my perspective, like I said, like it was all moving like kind of fast where like he was telling me how he felt and he was like, I like you and I want to be with you. And I had not, had someone from the get-go just like say that to me like it was very like a super slow gradual thing and I was like not used to it and it was it just felt like it was so much at once that I but you you were I wasn't just saying that out of like randomness yeah like I liked you it was reciprocated yeah like I liked you and I was like oh my gosh this is so fun but I started to panic because when I started to feel like it was so much too fast and then you were moving, I was like, okay, honestly, I'm kind of glad he's moved because I need time to process this like apart from you. And so I was definitely going back and forth where I was like processing with like the age thing, number one, where I was like, God, is this really what you want me to do? And so we took four days, we prayed and we fasted. And I mean, the Lord spoke to me so clearly from two people. Like I got two prophetic words in that time where I was like, whoa, like it worked. And the Lord spoke to me and I was like, okay, I feel clear about going forward. And so even though I had my fears and my doubts and a lot of just my past hurts, like a lot of my past was resurfacing back up. um, The Lord just kept giving me signs and like 
you know, grace and peace to keep moving forward. So that's why I kept going because I felt the Lord was in it. And I think in my own rational, logical mind, I was like, this, this doesn't make sense. Like he just moved away. He's younger. We're in different spots, blah, blah, blah. Like a lot of things to the worldly perspective, the outside perspective would have, would have said like, no, don't do it. Crazy. But the Lord paved a way. And even my best friends around me were like, Jay, like, we haven't seen you like this. We haven't seen a guy like you like this. We we feel good about this guy. Like everyone was around me championing me and like people were praying for me being like, we feel like the Lord is in this. So like, just keep going until you feel like the Lord says no, but we feel like the Lord has shown you some signs where it says yes. And so I was so excited. I was like, next week, here's your plane ticket. Here's your hotel room. Um, I'm going to put you up in the nicest place. We're going to have three days uh, to explore. We'll go to Disney World. Uh, and then we'll go golfing and, you know, man spoiled me and we had so much fun. We did. Oh my gosh. So just to be clear, like I did see someone comment they're like, do you guys travel together and sleep in the same room? We don't. No. He got, I got my own hotel room and we don't do that. But, um, he flew me out to Epcot or flew me out to Orlando. We went to Epcot, spent a whole day at the park, had so much fun. I mean like the best conversation. And again, like Every time, like, I was genuinely so worried about that day because I was like, what if it is so awkward? I'm spending yeah. a whole day. What if it's awkward? It wasn't a, a whole weekend. Yeah. That's what was cool. It was like, okay, it wasn't a fluke. It, it was, was two not, weeks. It wasn't a fluke. It was so fun. And, of course, I panicked again a little bit. You did. But we had so much fun. Went to dinner Saturday night. and We cried, cried at, dinner at dinner over talking about, you know, some deep things in yeah. our stories. And we bonded over some things. And, and it was really cool. Went to church on Sunday. And... You know, honestly, a huge, I hope he hears this, but Luke Lazan, dude, you're a goat. Pastor at LifeBridge in Orlando, and that's the church I was plugged in for about seven weeks that I lived there because uh, I do move back uh, to Dallas. And uh, he was just such a supporter in our relationship and also just helping me through like just that seven weeks in Orlando. I was by myself without any friends, any community, and we were doing FaceTimes. After she left, I didn't see her again for that month and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, also what's cool about it, when I moved, so I was about to sign a lease, and I meet Janine, and I really felt the Lord just be like, hold on. Like, hold on. Yeah. I told Janine, I said, this sounds crazy, but I feel like uh, I'm going to find a free place to live where I don't have rent. And so I worked in hospitality before. So they were letting me live in the hotel until uh, for about a couple weeks. And on the last night of my stay, uh, I was like, okay, about to sign this lease because I didn't have anywhere to live. And then I get a call from a buddy and he's like, hey, I have this guy near where you work. Uh, his wife just passed away of cancer. He has an open room. He could really use someone. And so I lived with him for the remainder of five weeks. Uh, rent free. So uh, crazy. And that is, you know, part yeah. of that's so cool. Yeah, it was insane. So basically, you know, kind of fast forwarding, you move back eventually and you move back in September. I also had just like in this meantime, when he was gone, I was really using that time apart from him to really process and pray through everything. And I have a couple mentors in my life and I prayed about that. And I just asked them like, Hey, what do you think about the age thing? And every single one of them was like, if he's spiritually mature and a mature guy, like you're good. And you're really mature. Thank you. Like I'm 24 really, now. really mature. So <laughs> he really is mature. So for anyone wondering, but he moves back and we had been talking for already about two and a half months exclusively at this point. And so then we're like, he's like, I want to be your boyfriend. Like you were really like, I want to be your boyfriend. I was the one that took a little bit slower on that regard. Like you had asked me, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. Literally week one, week, <laughs> week fourth one. day we're sitting there. And she was like, don't leave me. Yeah, I was sad. I was like, I was really sad. He was moving to Orlando. And then he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I was like, wait, was well, not what I meant. And I so thought she said yes, too. I started panicking. And I was like, wait, no, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> so he asked me to be his girlfriend like week one. He was like, I got to lock this down. But, we but I wasn't exclusive. ready yet. We were exclusive. Yeah. So but technically, we were officially exclusive. But like. But like, I guess to me, like labels do really matter. Yeah. And I mean, that's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> different podcast, but I wasn't ready yet to have the label and to have the thing official and have everyone be like, yes, I have a boyfriend. Like I wanted to feel really, really good about it before doing that. And so we did that like long distance thing and then talked for two and a half months and then we became yeah. official. Yeah. Well, when I moved back, it was heavy moving back, but it was so much fun. Just like getting yeah. to spend time together. Um, and then you just realizing that like, man, I wasn't going to change my mind. 
Yeah, I didn't. I thought for sure. I was like, at some point, he's going to dip. Like, at some point, he's going to leave or he's going to be like, this is too much or she's too old or she's this or like, I don't know. I just really thought that you would have left and you just stayed and you pursued and you loved me and you cared for me. And I was just like, <gasps> I was like, I've been experienced this before. What is this? And you just kept like, spoiling me like he would take me to these nice dinners and buy me flowers and i was like what is happening give you a foot rub occasionally yeah he did <laughs> it was very sweet so we become official and we dated for another another month so we dated for another month and i started to self-sabotage i started to freak out a little bit and just like really process you know because i take marriage as a big deal and i know he does too but you know we're that's what the reality of dating is is like you either get married or you don't and so as I'm starting to process this more and like my fears and stuff, like I just really felt like I was overwhelmed. It felt like too much. I felt like I had some stuff I needed to work through. I started to talk to some mentors again about my stuff and my, my thoughts. And they recommended like, Hey, maybe you guys should break up for a little bit. And I was like, I think we should too, because I think there's a lot of stuff that I need to work on by myself. And I want to hear clearly from the Lord by myself. So I really didn't want to break up with you. It yeah. was weird because everything, our relationship was fine. We weren't fighting. Yeah, we were, we, we had a good relationship. Like getting along so We felt easily. like best friends. We did everything together. And, uh, but the reality was, is like, okay, or, you know, even though we weren't dating for super long, it was like either we're getting engaged in this, this next year or not. Right. And so, um, yeah, she broke up with me right after Maddie's wedding that uh, I went to. Uh, and that was, that was really hard for me. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I baby. was, uh, I was kind of blindsided. I saw a little bit of her pulling back in some ways. Um, but honestly her breaking up with me for that, which was only eight, eight or nine days. No, it wasn't. It was, it was almost two weeks. You said you needed a week to think about things and then you officially broke up with me. And then it was like, Oh, right. Okay. Then that was almost like three weeks. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because in that few weeks, I really, even though I was hurt and I was super sad, uh, I think I realized that, man, I'm going to be okay. Like, I do love this girl. I thought this was from the Lord. Um, but, man, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I told her before we, while we were dating, I told Maddie, like, on our second date, I said, if this doesn't work out, what you have from me is a person who will still champion you. Uh, as long as you don't cheat on me, I won't talk bad about you. You know, and and so I told all my friends, I said, if one of you, I said, we're broken up. She hurt me. She, I think, even went back on some of the things she said to me. But none of you are allowed to say anything negative about her. Uh, if I hear it, I promise you, you're not going to want to be around me. <laughs> and I was like, I still care about her so much. I still in my gut was like, I still think there might be something there, but I'm not going to hold on to that. I felt like the Lord had asked me to like lay it down. And I felt like I was just in such a chaotic space in my life that I didn't know how to handle a relationship in the midst of that. Because also around this time is like right around when Maddie got married and Maddie was moving out. And I was literally handling so many different like changes at once that I started to like fully freak out and so you were traveling a lot too i was traveling a lot i was speaking and stuff and so um i like panicked and i was like i just need to be alone with the lord like i just felt like the lord was like i need you to be with me and hear from me and i felt like i was supposed to lay it down even though in my heart of hearts i for some reason i was like i don't think this is done i just knew i was supposed to surrender it and lay it down and let the lord do what he needed to do when we broke up, it was the most fun breakup I've ever been a part of. We broke up and we hung out for another hour. We were like laughing with each other. You were like, do you want to go on a walk? I was like, yeah, Went on I a do. walk. We were, we even hugged. I thought we, I almost, I was like, kind of want to kiss you right now. This is weird. Um, and so I left but with you, a smile But you looked at me face. and you said, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, no, I'm actually not. But I just felt like I was supposed to lay it down. Yeah. But it was like really hard because as soon as, we broke up and we left at first I was like okay like I did it whoa and like I felt good and then I got home and then like lost it oh my god I lost it I, was I thought weeping. you were chilling oh no I was sobbing I had a friend over I was like I think I just made the mistake like I made the biggest mistake in my life I'm gonna lose this guy like I was bawling my eyes out like I was like I don't want to lose this person and so I was like, I'm just going to give it some time and wait to hear from the Lord to speak to me if I'm supposed to reach back out. And I literally, in my heart of hearts, 
was like, we'll probably be broken up for like two months, two and a half months. And then I'll reach back out in January. And it was, it was sooner than that. The Lord spoke to me like that in like well, a week, a week and a half or so. I, I don't want to over spiritualize our relationship, but it is undeniable. Some of the things that happened that week, I, I sincerely was pretty moved. Not that I was moving on, but I was like, I muted her Instagram story. I was like, I can't look at her. I was like, I'm, I got to move on and I got to heal from this. Um, and Friday night, um, I had a dream that we're sitting on her couch and she was wearing this dress, my favorite dress she's ever worn. She was wearing that dress for some weird reason. And Freak. she was asking me to get back together with her. And, uh, I woke up and I was so mad. I called my mom and I was like, I, I was doing good. I was doing, I was okay. And then I had this stupid dream. Um, Which Caleb does have a lot of prophetic dreams. I'm just going to say that you do. But this was weird. Cause I had this dream. And my mom was like, do you think it was from God? And I was like, no, I was like, cause in my head, she broke up with me. We're not getting back together. Um, especially like I did ask my friends. I was like, Hey, will you click on her story? You know, so I can see, Oh my God. Cause I didn't want to give her the satisfaction that I was watching, which is kind of toxic, but, um, it should look like she was doing fine. And, um, the lies of social media, <laughs> literally I am at dinner Saturday night. I'm at the restaurant that we went to on our first date with my cousins from, uh, my hometown. And we have the same waiter that we had, on our first date. first date and second date and we, or one of our other dates. Yeah. We weren't trying to go to this. It was the only restaurant that was open. I was not trying to go there. They were like, are you sure you want to go here? Does this bring up old memories? And I was like, yes, it does bring up old memories. And we got there and I was deflated. Like I genuinely, I was doing okay. And I was like fully depressed. I was like, man, I miss her so much. I was just remembering the times that we had together. And I was like, man, I, I just don't know why this didn't work out. And I was wearing the shoes. I gave him. We have a matching Veja shoes that you guys have seen on my Instagram. <laughs> I was wearing the shoes that she gave me. And I posted a picture of me and my cousin on Instagram. Um, and she commented on it and was like, nice shoes. Well, in my defense. Okay, so he had told me, he said in the breakup, like, if you do not see this going forward, if you do not want to be with me again, do not tease me. Do not reach back out. And I was like, absolutely. I respect that. And I agree, like, I'm not here to play games. Before that, that day, I had gotten, like, it sounds weird, we don't over-spiritualize this, but we are, we are very people, we are people that believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I had gotten a prophetic word that morning, because I had been praying, and praying, and praying, and praying. I was talking to friends, I was like, I don't know if I made the right choice, but I just feel like the Lord's asking me to lay this down, and I was waiting for the Lord to speak. And I had gotten this, like, prophetic word that just confirmed everything. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like I am supposed to be with this person. So because I got that and I knew I was planning on reaching back out, then I was like, I was, I was stupid though. I did say nice you, shoes. Sh I shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have. I be really shouldn't have. So when she said nice shoes, I think she was pretty emotional when she was breaking up with me. I don't know if she, oh my God, I, was, I was bawling my eyes out. <laughs> I don't think she remembered how serious I was when I was like, do not reach back out to me unless you want to call me and you want to see me. And so she says, nice shoes. And I'm pissed. I don't know if I'm allowed to say pissed, but I was very upset. And because you thought I was playing games. Yeah. I don't respond. Yeah. And so, but I go to pay my dinner and I start panicking. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, he hates me. He never wants to talk to me again. Well, this, uh. this is where the Lord softened my heart. Okay. Maybe it's from the Lord. I'll, I'll hold that loosely. Yeah. But, um, I'm opening my wallet to pay for dinner. I reach in and I'm like, whose credit card is this? No lie. Janine's credit card and her ID is in my wallet that had, she had lost it like a month prior, but it, she put it into a slot that I never check. I didn't put it in there though. That's what's so weird. I really didn't put it in there. So I pull this out and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And I had been looking for this credit card for freaking so long. But I was so mad because I was like, I don't want you thinking that I'm going to use this credit card as a ploy to reach back out to you. And then the waiter looks at me and goes, your meal's on me. I'm sorry for what you're going through. He did. And he comped my whole meal. Aww. And um, I was like, huh. You should have used my credit card. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and so, but then I was like, okay, nice shoes with a winky face. I was like, that's interesting. So the next day I was like, I went to church and I was there for two minutes. And I literally was like, I can't, I can't do this right now. 
and I, I left church, which I don't know if you're supposed to do. And I went to my car and I texted her and I was like, Hey, I have your credit card and ID. I can cut it up. If you didn't, you ask God, like, weren't you like, God, if I'm supposed to text her, like, let me know. Yeah. But I also was like my more reason for kind of texting you was because I told one of my friends who's dating a girl that she's friends with. And I didn't want it to get back to her that I had her credit card and ID oh, and, and yeah. I didn't tell her. That's why I, I sent that message. And then uh, she responded. Okay. So basically he reaches out and I had just got done like praying. I'd gotten this word and I was trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out, I was like, God, like, when do I reach out to him again? Like, do I wait? And I was planning on waiting. Like I was like, I'm going to sit on this for a little bit. And then he, I was like, when do I reach out? And then boom. I get a text message from you. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Mm. So then he's like, Hey, I have your card, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh, thank you. He's like, do you want me to leave in the mailbox? I was like, no, I was like, honestly, would you mind bringing it when you see me? Because like, I actually love to talk to you about something. And you waited so long to respond and left me on the edge of my seat. It was 20 minutes. Okay. It felt like a billion years. So she texted that and I felt this calmness. I was like, let's freaking go. I got my girl back. That's literally how I felt. And so I (laughs) sat on that text message. I got, I left church, which God, I'm sorry. Um, I drove to, uh, our coffee shop and, uh, lo and behold, who do I see? I see Grant Trout, uh, Maddie's husband. husband. And I'm like, dude, she just, he's like, dude, he was trying to act like, you know, he didn't really know what was happening. And uh, I was like, she just texted me actually that she wants to meet up with me. So I think she might want to get back together. Um, and then, you know, we'll kind of fast forward. We end up talking. Um, I wrote down some things that I needed her to say to confirm and she hit every single nail. Um, and from then on, we never brought that up really again. I never was bitter. The -hmm. next day we're hanging out like we're best bros again. Yeah. I mean, literally. And we like got back together. We like cried together. We just like, I was just like, I'm sorry I hurt you and I'm sorry I broke up with you. But I was like, I think that was so necessary. And then you even agreed. You were like, no, you're absolutely right. Like it was necessary because it both propelled us in such different ways. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, like I always thought that most stories needed to be so perfect, but it was like the more that I'd heard people's stories, the more that I even like one of my mentors was like, oh yeah, me and my husband broke up in between two. She's like, don't feel bad. And I'm not saying that's a recommended method. Like I'm not like, yeah, break up with your boyfriend to test it out. But I do think that it worked because it really did give us a little bit of space where we were able to process like, what will life look like without this person? And I needed to do that. And then it ended up being a really good thing. It's so funny because I was pretty mad that she broke up with me, but I was on TikTok and I actually saw one of Sadie Robertson's TikToks and she did kind of the same thing, I think, to her now husband. Yeah, she did. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's more common than not. Well, it's, I think, yeah, I if I would have done that to you, it wouldn't have worked that, for sure. That well. For sure. I would have been like, free, yeah. just froze. so we get back together. Uh, we really just did not skip a beat and, uh, just got back to doing what we were doing before. I, I kept working in my job. I kept pursuing each other, kept learning more about each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I really tried to listen to what, you know, she needed to see maybe more in me and what I needed to see more in her of like, Hey, like I need, I really need you to, uh, you know, work on X, Y, Z to make me feel secure, um, in this relationship. Oh my gosh. It just, we just grew. It was like the, her deciding you like, I want to be in this relationship. It's like, we both got to decide that at some point. Yeah, I decided I wanted to be with you. uh, You decided you wanted to be with me. But I think what made it easier is like, you never wavered and you were like very consistent and you pursued me so well and you loved me and you showed up and like, you weren't ever like, well, frick you then I'm out and screw you and blah, blah, blah. Like you were so healthy and you pursued me well and you loved me. And I was like, I have never felt a love like this. Like I've never had someone love me, show up for me the way that you did. And it was exactly what I had prayed for. Like, it was like the type of love that I had seen in my friends that I've always dreamt of. Like I prayed for that and that's what kept me going was I was like, this person loves me so much. And I like want a love like that. And I felt it was reciprocated, but I was just wrestling. And something that I do want to add is like part of the story of why I really feel like the Lord was in it was, you know, when I talked about the four day fast and someone sending a prophecy, there was two prophecies that 
very much spoke to exactly who he was. Like it was like, people didn't even know I was dating him. I, Cause obviously I announced it. People, two people had words in a dream about him specifically that they didn't even know who he was, but they were like, I felt like the Lord showed me this person and he looked like this and this is what it was. And I was like, that literally describes Caleb. So one of the words was just someone had told me like, Hey, I believe in your future spouse or whoever you end up with. Like, don't expect what you are expecting. They told me like, whatever you think you're going to get, it's not going to be that. Like, it's going to look very different than what you've ever anticipated. So just expect the unexpected and believe that God is better than you could have ever imagined. And like all the things that God is in, he's going to do more than you can ever imagine. And that's why I'm very big on talking about the unexpected. And I know my friend Riley is too, because we've seen the Lord show up and give us what, not necessarily what we thought we would have, but what he knew we needed. And that was Caleb. And I think that's where it's been really refining because it didn't come in the form of what I expected, but it's been so much better than I've ever dreamt because I couldn't have drawn up this for myself. Like I would have never imagined it would be this like handsome 24 year old with, you know, you're just, you're different, but you're so good and so much better. And like the way you treat me, I mean, I want every woman to feel the way that you've treated me because it's been so like healing and, and freeing for me. And like, you allow me to be myself. And I think in the past relationships, I was always like, okay, in order for the person to like me, I need to be this, or I need to do this, or I need to change myself. And you just were like, nope, I like you exactly as you are. And that freed me up and allowed me to be more of who I am and to be able to be more unfiltered and unapologetic because you consistently unapologetically loved me. You like relentlessly loved me like that redeeming love movie. <laughs> Even when I'm trying to run away, you were like, I'm still here, baby. She's not as wild as that, that girl. No, was. definitely not. Um, but thank you. Uh, every guy wants to, to hear that, but I, you made it easy. Even though you made it hard at times, the easy part of loving you was our friendship. It's just like dating your best friend. Yeah. It's like, that's what it's about. And I really, we, do everything together and we work out together. We go to church together. We cook and, you know, yeah. I, I found myself of like, man, I, I, I'm putting my bros on the back burner. Uh, cause I just like love being with this girl all the time. And, uh, we, the, the person that I knew from date one, I was like, I'm going to marry this girl and, uh, she'll have to break up with me. Well, I did once. I'm and, sorry. uh, <laughs> and so now we're here. It is almost it's March. It's been seven months. Yeah, and... I don't know if we said that in the beginning, but yeah, we've been dating for over seven months. And this last, like, three months has been a lot of tough conversations, planning out the future when, you know, we would publicly announce this. Because on my side, I've never... This is all new to me. This is all this is all weird in a way. And, uh, and so I'm learning. I don't even know what to do. I'm like, hey, can I post this? You know, it's so weird. Like, can I post this? Like, because yeah. I don't want to come across as like, you know, I think now I just get to like give it people advice to do X, Y, Z. You know, I didn't use social media much. Um, when we started dating, I pretty much gave social media up just because I know that's a part of her life. And I was like, okay, I'm going to lay that down and just really focus on this, our, our relationship. And, and so. And your career and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's been. An, an amazing journey and like we have just seen there's so many like it's kind of crazy like there's so many other things that I even feel like we left out so of different things. dreams and things that the Lord showed to us and different parts of the journey and things that were confirmation and peace and even though it's like difficult sometimes when you that's relationships like I don't want anyone to be like look at anyone's relationship and be like it's so perfect because every relationship comes with different wrestles and in conversations and conflicts and things you need to figure out, especially mm -hmm. if you are wanting to get married, like there's so much to figure out, but it doesn't mean it has to be hard. It should be like, who do you want to do hard things with? Yeah. And we've decided we want to do hard things with each other. And so our relationship is so fun. It's life giving and we enjoy being with each other and like filming podcasts. And like, we are like, okay, yay. Now like what does podcasting look like together and social media and traveling and like we're trying to figure that out but yeah it's just it's so fun and easy with you it doesn't matter if you have 500 followers or 500,000 dating with just you and that person without outside comments or affirmation just allows you just to be able to just be in that moment and trust each other to where there isn't a fear when you do post you yeah know? Uh, or there isn't a an embarrassment there isn't an embarrassment factor 
Um, if you break up while you're live on Instagram and you got to delete photos or whatever. Yeah, I've been there, done that. And I think you have too. And yeah. it's, it's, it's just not fun. I posted once with a girl and we broke up <laughs> then two days later. She posted, she posted it as bad. Yeah. I, I posted her and she wouldn't post me for the longest time. Wow. I, and then finally she posted me. Then I remember she posted and I was like, dang, this isn't yeah. going to be good. Yeah. So that's kind of just like a gist of our relationship. Um, you know, we're still dating and we love each other and we are figuring out now social media together of like, cause he still has a full-time job. He's in healthcare. And so, um, he has a full-time job. And so like, this is still my full-time thing, but he'll be coming on every now and then we'll be doing fun stuff together, posting together every now and then. Um, we're excited to share our relationship with you guys a little bit more. That is definitely the backstory I'll definitely want to share a little bit more of my perspective just to talk to the ladies and just um, kind of like what you can look for in a partner and why I picked Caleb. And like at the end of the day, like you want to be with someone with the absolute best integrity and character and the way he pursues you and loves you. And like that is this person like I am like honored that one, you look you're this cute. But secondly, I'm like, y y he literally has the best character. And I'm like, that's what you want to marry. He's like, you want to marry a man of character, like above your amazing good looks. That's such a bonus. Your Stop character, me up. your character is what's going to last for years and years and years and years to come. And like, you have to think about like, do I want my kids to have the character as my spouse? And I do. And mm. I'm like really excited about that. And so you make me cry. You're the best, babe. This has been fun. Thank you for sitting down with me. I'm just so excited for what's to come and all the amazing new things that are on the horizon, a lot planned. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, also, ladies, I'm excited just to be able to you know, get you a little inside scoop on the male brain. Uh, I think so I complicated. have a degree in what that might look like. Um, have a degree in what you don't want. Uh, yeah. Because I've been that guy before, um, you know, back in the high school days which isn't that long ago, I guess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, ladies date younger, men date older. No. Your dreams will come true happily ever after. All I'm saying is don't write it off. Pray about it. Make sure it's good. Make sure he's spiritually mature. Um, I talked to a lot of friends that actually were dating younger men and I processed with them. So I maybe can do an episode on that. Actually with my friend, Kate Wortman, I, I think we want to do an episode on that. And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm like now kind of like don't write it off. And it's, it's interesting because the more that we've been dating, oh. the more I hear oh. so many people dating men younger than them. I'm like, this is not that uncommon. Michaela Peterson, her husband, they're six years apart. Cody Carnes, Carrie Job, yeah. Sav and Cole. Sav and Cole, four years apart. Um, yeah. You and I, Kate and JJ. There's actually so many. Like, I keep hearing about it over and over. I'm like, okay, so I'm not crazy. I thought I was crazy, but I'm not that crazy. You ain't crazy, baby. I ain't crazy, baby. I'm a little crazy. I'm just a little. But he's he's so sweet and great. And um, thank you guys for listening. And thank you, Caleb, for being on the podcast. I'm excited for you guys to get to just know him more and be around him a little bit more. And thank you for being a part of the journey. Like I said, so many of you guys have been with me for so many years. It's been like, gosh, so long being on the internet. I'm excited to finally like get to share our story with you guys. And just know like your story doesn't have to look like our story. God is writing your own story. He has something beautiful and amazing and incredible just for you. And so don't compare your story, your timeline to ours, to anyone else's, to someone on social media, like pray for your own God ordained story, because I believe that God has that for you. And I believe when you are abiding with the Lord and you're walking with him and you're asking him to show you, he's going to give you signs. He's going to point you to the right things. He's going to open doors. He's going to shut other ones. Pray for God ordained things. And even though it may not make sense to the outside people, the people in your life, like it didn't make sense to my family in the beginning. Now they are fully, fully on your dad's board. My best, best he, my dad is like, is obsessed with him. He like, texts all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. So like at first people may not get it, but when it is a God ordained thing, people will start to get it. And so that's all I have to say. And I'm so glad that every relationship that didn't work out that I, that I went through before I met you. And same. Like, oh my gosh. It, I just wish I could put my brain in my younger self and be like, dude, you're chilling. Yeah, you're fine. You'll find her. Exactly. And vice versa. It's yeah. So, so worth it. Yeah, and I'll talk about that in another episode, but just like how when a door shuts or a relationship ends, it's like if God took that away, like, be thankful because like now I can look back and I'm like, oh, God ended that past relationship so that I would be ready for him. And the way that that past relationship ended was so good that there wasn't any ties, which I'm so thankful for that. We had really good boundaries to where it wasn't like I had a lot of lingering 
pain and feelings. Like I could enter into a relationship with you, not having resentment or bitter feelings. Like I was able to date you and not be like, Oh my God, I still miss my ex. Like it wasn't like that. So mm. I think that's what it also looks like when you date well and, and end things well, because we did. And also really side note change. And then we'll end this. When you asked me out on my first date, I texted my friend, Allie, whom you went on a date with. And this just goes to show if you date well and you have good character, your reputation will always come back. And so I asked my friend Allie, I was like, hey, I know you know this guy, Caleb. What do you think about him? And she just was raving about your character. And I was like, he's younger. Is that weird? What do you think about that? She's like, no, Jay, he's so mature. I promise you, go for it. And so based off of the reputation, excuse me, and asking someone about you is why I said yes to the date. So it matters, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Well, thank you guys for listening. This was a long episode, but we're excited to see the feedback and thank you guys for listening to our story. We're excited to hear what you guys have to say and feel free to DM us and just don't lose hope. You guys, you have a special person out there for you. That's from God and keep praying. Don't cease to pray. And we love you guys. And, um, and the podcast when I'll be on, they got longer. They're going to get longer. Are they? I, th- I feel like her, I feel like your podcast could go a little longer. And so He's when I'm on, they're going to go for an hour and a half, two hours. Let uh, me know if you guys so. want that. 100%. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, 100%. Okay. All right, you guys. Thanks for listening to Happy and Healthy. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, y'all.